We take a look at a lot of Switch games worth buying on this channel, but what if you didn't have to buy the game. What if it was free? There are a lot more free games on the Switch than you realize. A lot more than I realized. While I was looking up free games for this video, I found a couple I'd never heard of before and they were actually fun. This is not the best 10 free games on Switch. It's another video in my series. I have talked about, at this point, every free Switch game. Believe me, everyone worth talking about is in these videos. So if if you missed one that you really love, it's in one of these. Go yell at that guy, don't yell at me. So whether you just got a Nintendo Switch or you've had one for a while and you're looking for more to play, here's 10 free games. Oh, and since I'm saving you a lot of money today, how about you spend it on today's sponsor? Hi, and happy holidays. She just burped in my face. If you want to help me feel better, why don't you go to satisfy.com, use code beatemups and get 10% off on top of whatever mega sale they're already doing for the holiday season. In this case, this awesome case, which you can get at Satisfy, is my Switch in the Satisfy Ronin Zen Grip Pro. Getting a little close there, buddy. <laughs> now it's fully dockable and gives room for the kickstand. There are two slots for games here in the back. I actually never talked about this. When they were designing this grip, I came up with the idea to put them in the handles. I can't believe I never actually told you guys that this was kind of my idea. And I love it. I can't recommend the Satisfy Grip for Switch enough because it actually turns the Switch into a super comfortable console that I could play for hours without getting carpal tunnel. But Satisfy doesn't stop there. You see this bulletproof case? Steam Deck is completely safe. You remove the cover and now you're instantly gaming with the Satisfy Stealth Grip. I honestly didn't think the Steam Deck needed to be any more comfortable or easy to hold. I thought it already felt pretty great. I was wrong. The biggest thing for me here is how much extra girth and grip it gives the handles of the Steam Deck. And it's also textured in a way that makes it really easy to grip and hold. It also feels really quality. It kind of feels tactical. Also dockable. If there's one thing Satisfy knows, it's comfort and practicality. They're both perfect gifts for the holiday season. Links down below. Use code beat-em-ups to grab some and stick them under your Christmas tree. But let's put the Steam Deck down for now and go back to talking about these free Switch games. My Hero Ultra Rumble released on Switch recently and finally answered the question, do we need every franchise ever creating a battle royale of its property? No. To be honest, it's really not that bad. I kind of liked it. This concept actually makes sense here. A large focus on the manga and anime revolved around the big school competitions where the students would get locked into an arena and forced to battle it out until one team remains. On Switch, it's a little clunky. Low frame rates and less than optimal resolution, but it does play. There's a bunch of heroes and villains to play as. Each have their own abilities and play styles. Other than the menus, which look a bit cheapy and mobile gamey, everything else feels pretty well produced. I particularly like picking a spot on the map at the start to spawn at and then having the game zoom in from the map to your character in real time. Also, the attention to detail in each character's outfit selections and unique emotes. There's a ton of voice lines and quips from the characters and I don't know if it's the original voice actors, but as far as I could tell, they all sounded pretty good. As you play, you collect loot to power up your abilities to higher levels so they do more damage. You can and also go plus ultra. I don't, eh, I don't really want to want to commit to that bit, which kicks all your abilities up to max level for a short period of time. I wish games like this had a bit more love poured into them so they could really shine. I could easily see this becoming the ultimate My Hero game. I mean, all the bones are there and it's still fun. You know, everybody kept saying Nintendo forgot about F-Zero, but then why did they just give us one of the best versions of this game so far? F-Zero 99 is the newest of Nintendo's take on the battle royale genre. I have to get used to me saying that word today. Because, you know, as cool as a Super Smash style battle royale game would be, the next best thing is to just take Nintendo's original games and throw a hundred players into them. This game gets wacky when you add in all these races, smashing, crashing, and bashing their way down tight, narrow tracks, managing their health so they don't explode before the finish line. Story of my life. And picking up gold orbs to fill up their special meter so they can take to the neon highway 
way above cutting in front of dozens of other players. The way that this version of the game heightens and makes even the simplest elements of F-Zero so much more crucial and exciting is incredible. Never have I ever been so desperate to reach the checkpoint line so that I can suck up the sorely needed health zone to enable me to get back out there and destroy some more players as I crawl my way to first, but ultimately come 23rd every time. Just get it while the getting's good because Nintendo has a habit of ripping away these 99 games from us as quickly as they give it to us. And speaking of, let's drop off about 65 digits and talk about Mario 35. Had to do some quick math there. And I might have been wrong. Since I've been making these free game videos, there's been a gap in the last year. And in that time, Mario 35 came and went, and I never got a chance to talk about it. Hey, it might come back someday. Let's look at it quickly. This is probably the most unique version of these games Nintendo has put out. Having 99 players in a Mario level would be insanity and just too messy visually. So the concept here was scaled back to 35 for the 35th anniversary. And rather than all playing in one game, you will play alongside each other in real time. Like, take a look around the screen. Each of these players are in real time and displayed on my screen while I play. As each player KOs, they leave the game, and ultimately you want to be the last Mario man standing. It's both super innovative and also kind of repetitive and basic. It was just playing through the same levels again and again and again and again, and while seeing all the other players is cool and all, I am just playing Mario. The same old Mario I played 35 years ago. Well, I, I mean, I guess 33 for me. Wow, that really blows my mind, actually. I'm so old. I hope they bring this one back at some point, even if it's just for a week or so. Oh, you know what other game came out and then ironically fell off in the last year and a half since I've been making these videos? Fall Guys. But that doesn't mean it's not still a super fun and wacky game with a huge player base. I played a lot of free games for this video and it was nice to get into matches in Fall Guys because I played this one called Super One Punch Man or something. It's essentially a Fall Guys clone with punching and I could not find one other player in the world to play with me. So it's nice to know you can always load up the fallen fellas and start flopping around with the other jelly folk. It seems silly to talk about what this game is, like any of you haven't been on Earth the last couple of years. Uh, Four Guys is, you guessed it, a battle royale, but there's definitely a spin on this one that makes it a way more unique. You play through multiple stages of mini game type modes, trying to outlast and survive the other players. This typically means racing to the finish line through a wipeout inspired obstacle course, staying in certain zones to score points, and the most common, trying not to fall off stuff. I mean, think Squid Games in real life. Although that's already been done by Mr. Beast and now Netflix. Kim and I watched that. It was good. It was actually pretty decent. <clears throat> Definitely one of the more quality free titles for sure, and it doesn't prey too harshly on people for microtransactions. The only thing off about the Switch version is they did some trickery to get it to work on the console, and all the other players look like they're moving at about five frames a second. Whatever works, I guess. I am not big into kart races. Like, I'll play Mario Kart, that game's sick. But all these clone kart racing games, I usually avoid like the plague. I had to play this one for the video, and I was... Actually kind of impressed. Disney Speedstorm comes as close to capturing the feel of Mario Kart 8 without actually being Mario Kart 8. It's got the racing, the drifting, the speed, the power-ups, random characters from Disney lore, like Elizabeth Swan. It plays out like any other Mario Kart clone, but featuring the Disney characters and maps. I'm a little shocked they went for such a gritty F1 racing type feel and not all super light and bubbly Disney. I would have preferred to feel like I was racing around Disney World. But then again, the Pirates of the Caribbean course looks pretty incredible and the music absolutely slaps. I will say, for microtransactions, oh, we've got the full eight course meal here, complete with cosmetics, characters to unlock, loot crates, and even pay to win mechanics. Ooh. Anyone can play without spending a dollar, but you won't be topping multiplayer ranks without dipping into the piggy bank. But you don't have to play the rank modes. And there's also a single player mode as well, a little more forgivable. It's actually a pretty fun kart racer. And I could see some people having a lot of fun with it for free. For some reason though, Mickey's ears aren't round. They're like hexagons. I don't know if that's like a legal thing, but it's really off-putting. I don't even like Mickey, but I don't like the way his ears look. Oh, what to say about Overwatch 2. <laughs>
No, really, what do I say? But what's more important than the fact that the developers at Blizzard crammed some extra content into the base game DLC style and then updated the title to add a number two in it, is that when they did so, they also made the game free. So while Overwatch 1 was a full price $60 game on the Switch, if you just held out a little while, you could have got it for free. This is easily one of my favorite ports on the Switch because it's essentially flawless. The only thing it's missing is about, mm, I don't know, 30 frames. But even still, it plays butter smooth, easy to control, and thanks to the already somewhat cel-shaded, cartoony visuals, it's not too bad on the eyes when you cram it down onto the Switch's 720p screen. And I thought explaining Fall Guys was redundant. <sighs> So Overwatch is a 5v5 shooter now, packed full with different hero characters, each with their own wildly different skills, abilities, and playstyles. And the game types are usually objective-based, like King of the Hill. I actually do like this game a lot. I've been weirdly always good at it. That's not even a humble brag. Usually first-person shooters, I have to practice a lot, but every time I pick up Overwatch, I just win. I just prefer Valorant, so I don't play it. And I suck at Valorant. In these free game videos, and I highly recommend you go back and watch all of them. I talked about Nintendo's online service for games like NES, Super Nintendo. Well, it's been a long time since I made one of these and guess what? We have N64 and GBA now, baby! And every time I talk about these in the video, people like to remind me, you do technically have to pay for these? Yeah, I guess. In the same way you have to pay for Game Pass. But once you do, the games are free. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Gamer math is what that is. So yeah, you do have to drop 50 bucks a year. You know, it's like $5 a month to access the these games, so the least we can do is see what's on offer here since we're paying for it anyway. On N64, we're talking Mario Party 1, 2, and 3, both Pokemon Stadiums, Wave Race, Excite Bike, Pilot Wings, Pokemon Snap and Puzzle League, Kirby 64, Mario Golf, F Zero X, Zelda Ocarina, and Majora's Mask, Paper Mario, Banjo and Kazooie, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64. Oh, they had a habit of doing that, didn't they? And Yoshi's Story. I mean, good. Good lord. Also, many of these games added online infrastructure, like multiplayer. And that's all before we even get to the GBA section, which has... Well, to be frank, a lot less. But still good. I mean, we got Mario Kart Circuit, Mario Brothers 3, WarriorWare, Zelda Minish Cap, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, Metroid Fusion, Fire Emblem, and whatever Kirby and the Amazing Mirror might be. I got a question, Nintendo. Where the heck is Golden Sun? You promised Golden Sun, son. Where is... That's F-099. Combine all of this with the NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and the Genesis collections, and suddenly that $50 a month you're already paying for looks- I'm trying to justify me putting it on the list. It's essentially free. Moving on. I've been making these videos so long that I can reference one from 2019, where we took a look at Realm Royale, which is, good lord, a battle royale. But, I- I actually like this one. This one is a straight up Fortnite clone made by High Res Games. Realm Royale stood out to me for a couple of reasons. One was all the abilities and special moves you could find around the map, like straight up Superman flying. And then the other reason, when you go down in this game, you actually turn into a chicken and you have the chance to run away balking and squawking. And if you avoid being fried, you get to turn back into a human and keep playing the game. It was a silly little gimmick that my wife Kim and I just loved so much. She would watch me play this game and she kind of liked when I died because I got to be the chicken. <laughs> the reason why I'm even talking about this game again here in 2023 is because the devs poured a ton of extra love into it since then, changing a lot of how the game worked at its core and re-releasing it under a new title called Realm Royale Reforged. The old rune system was removed and replaced with armor that can now be looted, equipped and upgraded, and certain weapons, abilities and power-ups are actually locked behind classes. I feel like that helps the game stand out even more on its own. If you're looking for a break from Fortnite, give it a shot. So Roller Champion surprised me in a couple of ways here on the Switch. One, because what the f is it? And two, it's made by Ubisoft? Huh? And that's why I'm shocked I just didn't even know it was here. It plays really smooth and visually even looks pretty nice. It's sort of like a skating game on rollerblades mixed with a competitive basketball type sports game. Actually, a better description is it's that one game from the Road to El Dorado movie if they were just all on rollerblades. Love that movie, by the way, and not enough people talk about it. You race around this track with the ball to give your team the ability to score. You have to make it around 
around at least once and go through all the gates to be able to score. And if you get tackled or lose the ball and the other team grabs it, you'll lose all of your progress, your chance to score, and the other team now needs to make their lap for their chance to get a goal. You can even lap multiple times before scoring to double the points you'll get. And if you manage to lap three times and score, you'll essentially just outright win the whole game. So the game could end theoretically in just a couple minutes. That never happened for me. My team's always sucked. There's even a map set in Brooklyn, which is pretty cool. That's where I shoot my podcast. Oh, the podcast that's ending? It's a long story. You can go and watch it. And we talked about how that was the end of the podcast, but I've decided to keep the podcast going and just host it on my own. That's terrifying to me. But if you want to check out the channel that's essentially becoming my channel now, go please give it some love and support. This one is low-key kind of a banger. My only issue with it is it seems like this is the whole game, which would get a little repetitive after a while, and I'm sure the remaining player base at this point is really good. Who knew is starting now? Maybe you guys. Uh, I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna say it right now on camera recorded. Omega Strikers kind of awesome. But sadly, the free-to-play nature of games these days, nobody cares anymore. And this one, like so many of them, came when it's gone. Which is a real shame because I really like this one. And it's not just because I'm biased. They put my face in the game as an emote, although that was one of the coolest things ever. Omega Strikers is a battle royale. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Think League of Legends meets Windjammers. You have to knock down the other team's defenses before you can go for the goal, and to do so, each character has their own abilities and play style. When I first played this with my friends, we recorded the first game that any of us had ever played, and right from the rip, we were screaming at each other. It's so much fun to play, and the controls are perfectly tight and responsive. Some character abilities get insane, like this one that shoots goop around the map, and if the puck touches it, it propels it towards the enemy side. There's also different characters for different positions in the game, like defensive goalies, attackers, and more neutral play types. Building a solid team and strategizing is key. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know how this game looks, but it feels intense to play, and it's more fun than I think people realize. The only drawback with this game here on the Switch is our version <laughs> kind of sucks. It's only 30 frames, and a game like this really needs speed. So if you want to get into it, download it on Switch, try it out, and if you want to get get serious with it, I would move to, I don't know, PC or anywhere else for the 60 frames or higher. Now that you're at the end of this video, I'll let you know that I wanted to make this because it, at this point in time, it's almost Christmas. I just figure a lot of people are getting switches around this time of year and not everyone can afford switch tax. Everything is so expensive on this stupid console. I mean, the Batman series just released at $60. Meanwhile, it's $5 on sale everywhere else. So sometimes it's nice just to grab a free game and play that. If this video has helped you at all in any way, please let me know below, like the video, subscribe. I've really enjoyed making these videos as I do enjoy making all of my videos and I will see you next time. I'm gonna go play some chicken game. Bye.